thank you guys um <clears throat> so i'm just gonna pray and then we'll just go right into it amen heavenly father we thank you so much for today thank you for who you are we thank you for every single thing that you're gonna speak through me but i surrender my thoughts and i surrender my mind i surrender my will to you i pray god that you speak through me and speak to me and speak to your people oh god in jesus name i pray amen amen um okay we thank god uh so yeah um i think yesterday or during the week i was i was i was just think of thinking of what god was god is actually trying to do in this time and then it just it it kind of like occurred to me that i like don't have to speak on sunday and then i checked the date and it happened to be on the 14th of february which um is valentine's day some of you celebrate it some of you don't but then uh during the week there was one thing that occurred to me that was speaking about uh love and i think either through the movies that i watch or through something that i was looking for or even doing a favor for someone um it kept repeating itself and that's what i could see evident in that week that is not to say that we just you know you um you show out nice gestures and stuff like that for the people that you love but then um it's a reminder to let us know that um love is very important and one thing that i got to understand and one thing i got to learn is the fact that love conquers all and the fact that love does not give up so today i was i was listening to a song uh, from elevation worship and it was speaking about the fact that love doesn't give up and the fact that our confidence is in the cross because love didn't give up on us love decided to be there for us to to be there with us even when we didn't know that it was there so one thing that i understand is the fact that um even in our relationships with people be it your family be it your friends be the people around you um or even with your significant other it's important to always let the love of god um be the one that speaks in the relationship be the one that um is shown be the one that is manifested in every relationship uh and from that i got to understand that the nature i what i just want to speak about today is about the nature the nature of love the nature of love um so i think last week we yeah last week we did a bible study we've started a bible study series about a new man and i was i think i was going through one of the plans and i got to understand um why as a believer i i have a life that is set apart i think when i was growing up i felt that um i i i, w- I was born into a christian home and the thing is that my parents are always cautious of the things we do and they're like do not do this do not do that and they tell you these things they give you all these rules without you really understanding why you have to do them that is not to say that i was rebellious or anything but then i still did them but then i feel that i now have the understanding of why why i'm actually doing these things um I got to understand that we've been called to a different life. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Bible says that the old man has passed away and behold, the new man is in. And one thing you need to understand is that you have a different way of doing things. The things you believe, how you live your life, how you speak to people, how you, in, you, how you interact with people, the places you go to, you have a different life. And because you have a different life, we also understand that we are ambassadors we are representatives of christ and meaning that in however you used to be 
whatever you used to do you coming before god god takes that all away and i feel that throughout my life the love of god has been so very evident because in the times where i feel that i'm not really worthy to stand before god he reassures me of his love he reassures me of his love so i want us to uh, go to first john first john verse four and then we'll read from verse six so i'm just gonna I'm just going to go through this and wherever the Holy Spirit leads us, we'll just, we'll just go there. Amen. So, 1 John, 1 John 4, 1 John 4, verse 6. It says that we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who, da- who, he who is not of God does not hear us. But by this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, verse 7 says, Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. For God is love. And then it says that in this, the love of God was manifest, manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Verse 10 says, In this love, not that we love God, but then he loved us, and he sent his son to be the propitiation of for our sins. Be- beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So, um, when I read this, one question that um, I believe I want us to ponder upon is that, I want I want to ask you think of that one thing that you one one of the craziest things you did for love or one of the silliest things you did for love or one of the dumbest things you did for love could be a crush you had or someone you liked and I mean instead of being in school <laughs> and reading your books you were thinking about how your wedding is going to be enjoying your dress and stuff like that i mean men say that ladies go all the way to think about even the future children how the house is going to be like and the kids that are going to be there even the number of kids and stuff like that but then think of the craziest thing you've ever done for love or even the silliest thing something that you look back you look back now as and you're like (laughs) but what was really wrong with me why did i really really do that why did i really really do that and it makes you understand that love can make you do very interesting things in every angle and it's not and one thing i understand is that love is a good thing um the bible says that god is love and that love is of god and the bible also makes us understand the dimensions of god's love for us so if love is a good thing and <laughs> you may have done something that was really crazy and maybe the person even did it too didn't even feel the same way and then you got heartbroken and disappointed and stuff like that these things happen these things exist but one thing that i feel that through time i've come to um sort of like realize is to always make sure that i'm loving people the way first corinthians 13 uh, from verse 8 tells me too i think for me i just look at it as a checklist if someone does something and i go to check in the bible because the bible is a standard i go to check in the bible and i look at my actions and i look at what i do is it really in line with what the bible is saying do i love i love this person so does it mean that i should give up I love this person. Doesn't mean that I need to boast in it. What is First Corinthians thirteen verse eight saying? Now, one thing I understand is that Jesus did the craziest thing for us. He died for us. I don't know which. <laughs> I don't know who is that person or that guy or that girl that can die for you. That is not to say that 
you know you are supposed to doubt people's love but then one thing you need to understand is that you are very precious the bible tells us that we we've been bought with a price and even when we've been bought with a price it still makes us priceless because no one can really buy us it says we've been we've been bought by the precious blood of jesus being bought by the precious blood of jesus that makes you understand that you are very important to god god really cares about you and even in that the bible also tells us that we don't we didn't do anything even when you didn't know about god god still loved you and he decided to show his love he's decided to express his love by giving his son for you giving his son for you now why am i saying all these things the bible tells us that if we love god and we say we do not love our brother then we are telling lies so the only way that we can show that we love god is when the people that we can physically interact with are the people that we show the love that is within us to them so love is not that thing that we we sort of like have to like now pray for it and then get it you are a believer and you have a measure of love and the only way that love can grow is when it's tested is when it's being manifested is when it's being used um the only way someone can know that you are patient is when you are tested and tests come so that we can prove that we have that virtue in us if it's a virtue of patience a virtue of love a virtue of forgiveness all these things are very important but then they don't come automatically they come as you as you are tested they come as um things happen to you and when things happen to you you still you are still standing on your feet to say that i am patient so i'm gonna wait upon the promises of god i'm patient so i'm gonna just wait for god ha- i'm just gonna wait for what god has to say so um first first uh first john verse 4 i think from verse 12 from verse 12 it says that no one has seen god at any time if we love one another god abides in us and his love has been perfected in us verse 18 by this we know that we abide in him and he is in us because he has given us he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent the son as a savior to the world verse 15 whoever confesses that jesus is the son of god god abides in him and he in god verse 16 and we have known and believe the love that god has for us god is love and he who abides in love abides in god and god in him now verse 17 is is very important to see that love has been perfected among us in this that we have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us so we loved him we love him because he first loved us so this makes me understand the agape kind of love the love that is without condition the love that is without condition so god first loved us and he didn't have to um you didn't have to do anything or you didn't have to um be right or be wrong but one thing he needed us to do is to know about his love when you know and understand the love of god then you act on it that's where you then look at your ways and you change your ways things that are not in line with what god has to say for you or things that are not in line with god's will for you you do not do them because you love god the Bible also tells us that if we love God, we will obey his commandments, we will obey what he's saying. Amen. So then it's important to know that love is that is that thing that encompasses every single thing. The Bible says that um first love f- first love um God, then love your neighbor as yourself. Not more than yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So 
um i think during this week too i got i think two people were saying some very interesting things and they were speaking about the fact that um <laughs> anyway i i don't think it's true but anyway what they were saying is that um i just like to always help people and not really i'm not really sort of like concerned about myself but i feel like sometimes it's not like i need anything or anything no okay i'm contradicting anyway what i'm trying to say is that um now i'm confused what i'm trying to say is that um i don't i don't really i don't mind doing things for others but then i think i was i was told that doing things for others at the cost of um at the cost of what you have or what you are doing is it's not the right way to go it's not the right way to go so then i mean yeah you would you definitely want to help others um and stuff like that but the bible says that love your neighbor as yourself as yourself now if i am supposed to show love to someone meaning that i i already i need to have love within me now when we talk about the nature of god if something is your nature then it's of you if something is your nature then it exists in you and it's 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 the way we also need to be very conscious of our identity that we are of god and we are made in the image of god and for the fact that i'm made in the image of god i need to walk like that i need to live like that my lifestyle needs to be changed so then if i have that nature of love meaning that i also need to love like christ i need to love like god and loving like christ is it's it's very interesting where it says that when someone does something to you, you're supposed to forgive them you're supposed to forgive them and that you're s- when you love people you need to make sure that you know you have compassion for them and sometimes we have people do stuff to us and sometimes you don't understand so this person says that okay you are my friend but then they go to my back and they do all of that they do all of that do they really love me but then the question is how do you react to the things that people do are you manifesting the love of god um to them are you doing that or because god said you should or because you feel like you're obliged to one thing you need to understand is that we are we are of the nature of god and if god is love then we are of the nature of love i hope you understand what i'm saying we are of the nature of god and if god is love god is equal to love then we are of the nature of love so meaning that in all that we do we need to love like god we need to love like christ and the bible says that um jesus came as god in flesh to show us how to go about with things to show us how to go about with the things that are around us so um i want us to look at first corinthians first corinthians verse 13 first corinthians verse 13 now when i look at first corinthians is god so much that has to do with the church um first it start with paul's um paul greeting the church then it start with uh paul encouraging them to forgive one another it speaks about like excelling in giving it speaks about a whole lot of things and i feel like it's important that we like we definitely know these things it even speaks about prophecy it speaks about tongues it speaks about like spiritual gifts and things that we need to have as believers so i think it's very important to go to the word of god and you know know these things for ourselves not that paul was just writing these this letter to the corinthians but then this is there so that we could also um look at it so first corinthians 13 verse 4 um verse 4 says that love suffers long and is kind um so i think there was a time where there was a time where I got into a situation where I had to go back to the word of God and check my character, check what I was doing, check whether I was loving like the way Christ does. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4, it says that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. 
love is not puffed up love does n- does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails but ra- but when there are prophecies they will fail whether they there are tongues it will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away amen so i want i want to also go to the i, w- I want to also go to the tpt the tpt version but uh before that we we sh- we are striving to be people that are like christ we are striving to be people that are perfect like god and for the fact that we are doing that that does not mean that we might not falter or we might not fail it just means that when you see that you have gone wrong in the wrong direction or in the wrong way or in a way that is not according to the will of god you have the opportunity to come back to god one thing that i always understand is that god is a merciful god and god is also a just god so then in this dispensation of the holy spirit god's mercy is so much evident god's mercy is so much available now there's going to come a time where we stand before god and he will judge us and ask us what we did with what he gave to us whether we fulfilled our purpose on earth so it's important for you to understand that all of these things are important i think sometimes we take the bible and then we literally look for things that suit what we are doing or we look for things to tr- kind of like fit our own situations or take things that that and uh, take scriptures in the bible and we use that to justify our actions which is not right the bible says that the scriptures are not for personal interpretation so if you want to understand if you want to understand the bible we need to let the holy spirit um reveal it to us we need to let the holy spirit make us understand the word of god and we should not use the word of god for our own benefit for our own selfish gain love is not selfish i think it's one of the things that is here love is not selfish it says it believes all things it hopes all things now this then comes to to me just um just looking at all of this and looking at the people around me I think in this time, it's important to appreciate the people that are around you, the people that are there for you, and the people that um, speak to you and stuff like that. And all of these people are important. I think for me in my life, there are people that make popcorns for me. There are people that, you know, I go to them when I need help. And like these people are all important. And the reason why I'm saying this is because there is there are gonna be times where we might not have these people around. I mean people people are gonna move forward. I think that's one thing that um being in Wenjo has has really taught me. That people are gonna graduate, they're gonna go either to a different country or to their countries, people are gonna get a job, people are gonna start a family. Like life moves on. We might be all together at this particular point in time within a particular um, period of time be it maybe four years or six years we might be together in the same class in the same budge um in the same church in the same soul group or or anything but then one thing you need to know is that while you are with all these kind of people around you it's important to number one appreciate them appreciate them and appreciation doesn't it's it depends on um your relationship with the person there are people that freely want to do things for god there are people that freely want to just help people there are people that are there when you need them for a particular thing and there are people that might not be there for a particular thing that is not to say that they are not helpful i think with time i've come to understand um the different types of people and the different types of friends people that will be there um to go with you to push on to the same 
aim or to work towards the same aim or to work towards the same goal and then when that is done like self like their job is done and there are people that will be there when you're happy or you're sad or you're broke or you're rich or whatever it may be there are people that are there now one thing that i i really really believe i really really hope that god continues to work is the love that resides in the church the love that resides in the church because i feel like that is very very important that is really really important now the love in the church should not be a love that is being faked because we are supposed to love each other where you smile right in the face of someone and then behind your back you are saying a lot of things against them that is not something that should be done that is not something that should be done the love that should ha- that is in the church should be a love that is not selfish a love that hopes all things is not popped up it's it's not it's not boastful it's a love that is kind this is this love should really be in the church and it doesn't it doesn't start with you waiting for someone to do it or you waiting for the executives or the elders it starts with you it starts with you one thing you need to remember is that we are in we are in this together okay now we come to church and all of that it's not to say that we 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 come to church because oh you know we are self-righteous or we are perfect now one thing you need to understand that we want to be perfect beings and the bible tells us not to forsake the 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 gathering of the of the brethren and we coming together as a fellowship I think there was one thing that one there was a book that I was reading. I was speaking about the fact that there is a blessing in corporate anointing. There's an there's an anointing in corporate meeting, and the fact is that sometimes when we come together, there are there could be gifts, there could be um, encouragement, there could be a deliverance, there could be things that are rubbed off on each other because of our, of our availability to be in one place because of our own decision to surrender before God who is among us. He says that where two or more are guided, I'm there in their midst. So, yeah, you could, when you have the opportunity to meet together as um, as a fellowship, as brethren in Christ, it's important to make use of that opportunity, be it on Zoom, be it physically, however it may be, it's important to really make use of it because when you do that and you go be go in that place of fellowship and you put a demand there there's something that rubs off on you it's like you having a friend and they use a particular word and after a period of time you you start using the same word or you start speaking the way they speak that is because you spend so much time with them and that is also to make you understand that it seems that's why we always i i like it's it always rings and re-echoes that we need to really have a relationship with God. We, we really need to spend our day and our time with God daily. Because let's say when you spend time with God every single time, whatever that is of God wraps up on you. It's like it falls upon you. It's within you. Because the constant, the constant communion that you have with God every single time, it it helps give an exchange in things that are not perfect in lo- in your life god works on them god teaches you god shows you so uh daily communication with god is important i think i think yesterday i was i was praying and then god brought brought to my attention something something that i did and i and i think every single time i'm praying wh- one thing that i picture is God being so large and me being right before his throne and just speaking to him as like someone right in front of me and I'm speaking to them. And this was this was something that was very important and God was just telling me that I need you to go back to that place. And I I honestly thought that I was doing that but then God then corrected me. God then alerted me that I need you to go to that place. Because you seem to have just gone away from it. I need you to go back to that place. Why is it that we always, I mean, sometimes we say that, let us go back to our first love. Let us go back to our first love. Now, this one thing that I understand is that 
if you understand the love of God, if you love people the way God loves you, if you forgive people the way God forgives you, you won't have any issue with anything because the love of God covers every single thing, every single issue, every single thing that you may go through with with anyone. And the love of God is very important because when you understand the love of God, you would know how to love your family the way God loves them. You would see, you see the way God sees them. You'd be able to have an opportunity to see God's, God's, how God sees someone, how God sees your friend, how God sees your significant other, how God even sees you. Now, one thing that I really want to stress on today is that the love of God is for you and the love of God is in you. And the love of God also needs to be shared through you. Amen. It's for you, it's in you, and, and it needs to be shared through you. It needs to be shown through you. So if you are in a place where you're not showing the love of God, God does not condemn us. God still loves us. And one thing he wants you to do is to come back to him and be cautious of what you've done and love he, love people the way that he loved you. Love people the way that he loved you. Now, looking looking at this, um, I won't say that I won't say that I have I have uh, I have lived life or something like that. But I would say that I have moved through different different stages and different levels in my life where I have I have come to really understand and even come to open up and stuff like that. I think as far as far as I can remember, um, I I wasn't really a, a type of person that could sit in front of people or stand in front of people and speak, because I just felt that um, I just felt that any time I I do that, all eyes on me, and I didn't like I didn't like to have um all eyes on me. I didn't want attention from like the whole public. I think a friend of mine was telling me that. Um, I seek the attention of one person, but not everyone. And now I then got to understand that I can't, like, because of that, I can't really go out there to do the things that I wanted to do for God or even step out to say that I want to serve God. Because when you serve God, you are serving God's people. You can't, you can definitely, um, Prayer is one thing that you can do in your closet. But then now when God calls you to reach out to someone, now that becomes something that was so, so was so, so serious that I had to sort of like step out of my comfort zone. So then I wasn't really um, an open type where I would literally share whatever I'm going through with people because I just felt like, you know, people bring problems, but... You know, it's just um, it's something we are still working on. That is not to say that I think like that anymore, but it's something that God was working on. And one thing I realized, I think I was just thinking about it, and I and I was just like, "But God, wow, you you really love me." Looking at how time has gone past, and looking at how things have been, the love of God has been so so there so so there i mean in times where i just go my way and it might not seem serious to anyone but then to me it was so serious that i felt that any time that i did something that was the time that god would tell me god would send someone and be like okay do this and i'm like but god this is what i've done before you and i literally don't think i should do this for you but then he he makes known to me that I love you not because of what you have done. You you have a right standing be before me not because of what you did or what you are going to say in the next minute, but because the love because of the love of God, because of the precious blood of Jesus that has washed away your sin. And what you need to do is to be conscious of that, understand it and walk in it and ask for forgiveness and make sure that you're on the right path. Okay, so even from that, I have also been in 
I've 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 also met people um that have been very I'll say I'll say we kinda like we kinda like click together because I was one person that was that would be so quiet and I won't mind listening to you. And I had a friend that would just speak should just speak so so long for so many hours and and all I'll be doing is just listening and asking questions. And my mom will be like, oh, you guys have been on the call for like hours. What exactly are you guys talking about? And I think it also made me understand who I was in a different perspective. Now, fast forward, I, I moved through school and then I'm exposed to um, character building. I'm exposed to um, speaking in front of people and I'm exposed to people of different nationalities people that and i'm giving uh, an opportunity to speak there were times where it would it would not seem so easy but then one thing i'm grateful for is what god has been doing amen now throughout time I've, I've 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 met people i've met different people friends you know <coughs> exes people interesting no that is not to say wait guys this is a very hard part to open up but i believe this this is this is how it's gonna go so yeah when i say exes i don't mean thousands i just mean like just a single number of people now one thing that i've got to understand is uh what i learned from each and every one of these experiences so um there are times where people are going to like really hurt you and there are times where you are even going to hurt people but one thing that you need to make sure is that you you when you when you see that you have gone wrong when you see that you have been in a place where you have done things wrong you need to correct them you need to correct them and correcting them is very important correcting them is very important it might be someone that you you guys were friends and then something happened or the person didn't really behave in the way that you felt was nice or they really hurt you or maybe someone gave you a broken heart or you were or you were oblivious to all the signs that someone some guy was giving you and you really thought that this guy was leading you on meanwhile he wasn't everyone could see that he wasn't but in your mind you felt like no like this is the person and stuff like that but then one thing you need to understand is to let the love of god just really dissolve in all your situations just really dissolve in your heart i think over time sometimes i feel the love of god as that warm arm that really keeps you safe and that really protects you. It protects you and it reassures you that you can still love people, that it reassures you that you can still move from this place of pity and still have more friends and have people that will stand by you and have people that you would even stand by and have people that you can pray for, have people that you can even have a good relationship with, have people that can even be there and you you would be able to create a good family that is of god to create relationships that are of god i think i was speaking to someone uh yesterday and they were speaking about the way um like uh the way christian relationships have uh just that thing where it seems like i mean in the world they feel like if you're in a relationship with someone you definitely have to like get something from it but then in the Christian relationship, what we do is, what is given is like your time. You give your time to the person. You give your ear and your attention to the person. Where you listen to what the person is uh, saying. And then, yeah, you, you get to know about the person's day and stuff like that. Or even when it gets to the point where you you even advise the person. You pray with the person and stuff like that. Now, it's important one thing that i i really really feel like it's really important in the church and it's really on my heart but i feel like until i i i just want to wait for god to really give me the go ahead to go um to to talk about it 
is the relationships in the church relationships meaning like the romantic relationships because i feel like there are times there are, there are points in time where some people go out and then like something happens and it gets really messed up then the church sort of like loses a member because they don't want to see that guy and be so upset because he did something because he did something they don't want to be so upset and just like i don't know but then one thing i believe is very important for us is knowledge knowledge and understanding knowledge of um of love knowledge of the person that you are you feel you want to be in that relationship with and one thing is a confirmation from god god you speaking to god about it that's why we say have a relationship with god where before you even say yes to someone or no to someone you've listened to what god is saying and so then what god is saying becomes the only thing and not what you want or what you think you should have or what you feel should be done and i really really i think i was speaking to someone and i was just like God really restore the relationships that are in the church where people are like even when they they come together and stuff like that they are still able to do things your way and not do things away from what you are saying honestly we can't be part of the of the world records of people who get married and divorce after two years or even a month we cannot be like that we are people that are representatives and ambassadors of christ and that needs to be seen in your relationships your relationships with people your relationships with family your relationships with your friends your relationships with siblings relationships are very important and if you feel like you do not want to have any relationship with anyone then just go stay in a cave and just be with people that just be with things that do not speak because now god is very very cautious god is very concerned about our relationship and god is really concerned about our heart he's really concerned about things that uh, things that move us and god is really concerned about the love that we have for each other be the love you have for your roommates your friend whoever it may be god is very concerned about it so then i mean in this time of in this time of um valentine you may be the person that like celebrates it or the person who doesn't and yeah there might there are also songs around that are saying that god is the god of the single god is the god of the long distance relationship god is the god of the short distance relationships god is the god of people that you know who's who are waiting for other people god is the god of people that um have um, anyway but god is the god of every single thing and one thing you need to understand is that even while it seems like the world is celebrating valentine's day you may seem to be um you may seem to be lonely and and sometimes desperate and that sometimes moves people to make rash decisions rash decisions i honestly honestly really hope that god gives me a way to attend to all these issues that have to do with relationship because relationships because they are very important yeah you praying in your closet is is very important but then you also coming out of that closet and interacting with people is very important the way you speak to people your character and how you go about with things how you respond to people all of these are very important sometimes sometimes you are going through so much things that you emit this energy to people that keeps them away and it then makes you feel like you're not loved makes you feel like you're always being rejected but one thing you need to understand is that god always loves you and there are definitely some things that we definitely have to work on as believers so this is what i'm just gonna say to you um on this day and even after this day know that god loves you i'm not saying it because it's something that we say know that god loves you and also know that you are precious to the heart of god 
you are precious to him. If you weren't precious to him, he wouldn't have sent his son to come die for you. The other thing I want you to understand is that because God loves you, you also need to love others the same way. You need to love others the same way without exception. You do not put an exception because maybe we are not from the same country or we are maybe not from the same continent and stuff like that. The Bible says that God so loved the world. So everyone, sinners, believers, sorry, everyone. And one thing that is also important is speak to God and let him reveal to you the things that you need to work on as a believer, the things you need to work on. Be it in a relationship or not, you need to make sure that God teaches you on what to work on what to work on i think I, w- I was starting to read this book and there was this guy asking that why is it that um the love that you have for someone just fades after marriage and they didn't understand because they have been divorced three times and it's like they love the person and after marriage it just seemed like everything vanished it just seemed like now all every single thing they had for the person was resentment and we don't want to i re- we don't really want to be in that place i i really we really want to be people that will start changing the records of the world where divorces are on the highest peak and people that are in long lasting relationships are like 10 <laughs> percent or even lower than that in the world we need to be people of change in all in every single thing we do we need to be people of excellence in every single thing we do this might not be something that I might even be able to cover in this period of time. But then one thing that I would just want to say is that if you need help in, in any relationship you are going through or you need to speak to someone, find someone and speak to them. Or you can speak to me. I can help you as best as I can. I won't say that I I I know it all, but then I will say that I can still share with you the things that I know. But one thing you should never forget that is that God loves you. And for the fact that God loves you, you need to love other people. That is the only way that you can show that you love God. And for you to love other people, go back to the Bible. What is the Bible saying about love? How should I love people? What should I do? And the Bible will direct us on what to do. So just to conclude, I just want to say that love really conquers all. When you have gone through or when you've gone through the winter, the summer, the autumn, the spring, the fire, the wind, the volcano, the heat of the moment and everything, you would understand that love conquers all. Love conquers all. And it's important for you to understand that love conquers all and love does not give up. Love is God. God does not give up on you, so do not give up on people. Where you need, if you are, but make sure that you are always um speaking to the holy spirit the holy spirit is always speaking to you on what to do so yeah i just really hope that um over the period of time you know god will just help me be able to um um attend to issues that have to do with um the really really basic things that affect us as as affect us as believers because these things are very important these things are very important so you know from here just send a message to your friends send a message to your family members and really show them you can write a poem to them or whatever you want to do but just make sure that the love that you're showing up to them is not love that is fake but it's a love that is coming from within a love that is coming from an, un- an understanding that you need to love them the way christ loves them Amen. You need to love them the way Christ loves them. So, um, you know, happy, happy love day <laughs> to people who celebrate Valentine's or not. Um, and I just, I just really hope that God continues to make you understand the breadth, the height, and the depth of his love. Ephesians uh, 3 verse 17. You can go back to that and it just helps you understand the dimensions of the love of God for you. So, um, before I go, I just, I just want to just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. 
I thank you for what you are doing in your fellowship in your church. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would direct the hearts of your people, that you show them how to love like the way you did, the way you are still loving us. Father, I pray, oh God, that anyone who needs an answer or anyone that needs confirmation in wh- whichever place that they are in, in their relationships with people, that, Father, that you would help them. If they need to forgive, if they need to let go, if they need to just still hope and if they need to still believe, Father, may you speak to them, may you make it known to them. But I pray for every single person that is listening to me. And I pray, God, that help them build their relationship with you. Help them grow in their relationship with you. Help them spend so much time with you that now you and them are one. Father, we thank you and we know that we have a measure of love. So, Father, help us manifest that love to the people around us. In whatever we do, in anything we do, in our actions, in what we say, in how we go about with our lives. But help us understand the nature of God and help us walk in it and just live in it. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for what you are doing among us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.